What do you think we're gonna do today? I don't know. You can never tell with this frizzle. Hello, class. Welcome back to another wonderful day. Any guesses on what we're doing today? Bugs. Quantum mechanics. Wrong. What's the matter with you guys? Today we're learning about the three laws of matter. Let's go. <laughs> yeah. Buckle up and keep your heads about you. We're heading back to France, 1785, right before the French Revolution. We are visiting a very special scientist named Antoine Lavoisier. Yay. Step on it, Miss Frizzle. Oh, hello there. Hi, I'm Antoine Lavasware. Right now, me and my wife are trying to prove that in transforming any amount of mass matter, none is ever lost or gained. The mass amount of water is heated to steam. The steam is brought into contact with a red hot iron barrel embedded in the coals. From this end, we cool the steam, but interestingly, we collect less water than we started with. So we lose a certain amount of water. However, we collect a gas and the weight of the iron barrel increases. When we combine these two, it increases. The new weight of the iron barrel and the gas collected, they are exactly equal to the weight of the lost water. Water is made out of hydrogen and oxygen, so he had to get, get the oxygen to stick to the inside of the red hot iron rifle barrel basically making rust, and left the hydrogen, which he referred to as combustible air, floating around as a gas. No mass has been lost, it has merely been transformed. What? Let me break it down for you. The law of conservation of mass was discovered in 1785. The definition can be read as matter, or mass, is neither created nor destroyed through physical or chemical means. Or, put more simply, mass reactants equal mass products. So now we'll take a look at an example. So when you're given one gram of hydrogen and eight grams of oxygen, added together it'll equal nine grams of water, as it shows the same amount from start to finish. Yes. Hey guys, now we're gonna go meet a guy named Joe. Mr. Krauss here discovered the second law of matter, the law of definite proportions. The main point of my law is that chemical substances only truly combine form a small number of compounds, each of which is characterized by components that combine, and fixed proportions by weight. Therefore, my experiments were based on inorganic binary compounds like metallic oxides, sulfides, and sulfates. I believe that most metals form two distinct oxides at constant proportions, and then those are able to produce two separate series of compounds. I focus specifically on copper carbonate, where I found it is always 5.3 parts copper to 4 parts oxygen to 1 part carbon. From that, I continue to determine that there were always fixed ratios. The law of definite proportions comes in. It is helpful when determining mass percent of certain elements and compounds. Wait, hold up. Can we get the actual law, please? Of course. The law of definite proportions was created in 1806 by Joseph Proust. The definition can be read as, A given compound, always, contains exactly the same proportion of elements by mass, regardless the amounts. The first example we'll look at, we're given eight grams of oxygen and one gram of hydrogen. These always have the same ratio of eight grams of oxygen to one gram of hydrogen. In example two, we're given 17 grams hydrogen peroxide. 
This always has the same ratio of 16 grams oxygen to 1 gram hydrogen. In these two examples, it shows the same proportion ratio every time. Makes more sense now. So it's like if a compound has a 1 to 1 ratio, then it always has to have the same number of components. But if it has a 1 to 2 ratio, then there always has to be double of one of the elements. Regardless of mass. Perfect. Let's move on to the third and final law. Okay. Okay, now we're heading back to England in 1806. We're going to visit a special scientist named John Dalton. Yay. That's correct, class. I'm surprised you know that. But can any of you guess who I am? Bill O'Reilly. Incorrecto. I am John Dalton, aka the father of the law of multiple proportions. And yes, the law of multiple proportions is when two elements combine with each other to form more than one compound. The weights of one element that combine with the fixed weight of the other are in a ratio of small whole numbers. I'll explain to you how it works. Let me give you an example. There are five distinct oxides of nitrogen, and the weights of oxygen in combination with 14 grams of nitrogen are in increasing order, 8, 16, 24, 32, and 40 grams, or in a ratio of 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Um, in other words, the Law of Multiple Proportions was created in 1803 by John Dalton. The definition is a bit complicated, but we will break things down. When two elements form a series of compounds, the ratios of the masses of the second element that combine with one gram of the first element can always be reduced to small whole numbers. So now we'll break things down. In our two compounds, the ratios of the masses of oxygen that react with one gram of hydrogen must be a small whole number. So with the numbers we worked with earlier, water, its ratio is eight grams of oxygen to one gram of hydrogen, and hydrogen peroxide is 16 grams oxygen to one gram hydrogen, both consisting of small whole numbers. Now I understand that the ratio of one element to one gram of the second element, you get a small whole number, like one or two. Yeah, you got it. Let's go back to school. <laughs> well kids, how was today? Did you learn a lot? Yeah. Yeah. Let's recap. We learned about the three laws of matter, the law of conservation of mass, the law of definite proportions, and the law of multiple proportions. We also learned about the scientists who discovered them. All interesting and smart people. Well class, thanks for coming along for the ride.